So jumping right in, one of the more difficult things perhaps is just getting the loading. So what I've shown here on the right is a cross section of a wall of a, say a simple um, one story masonry building, big box building, warehouse, something like that. Um, we often have then an eccentric vertical load which is typically towards the inside of the building. Uh, so there's a bearing plate there, there is a, um, a ledger beam, there's something that uh, causes the vertical load from the roof and or floor if it's a multi-story building to um, actually usually be towards the inside of the building. So we have an eccentric load at the top. Hence then often the wind suction is the critical loading or if it's a seismic loading, the loading in the um, direction shown here that both of these then would cause tension on the outside um, face of the building. If we have wind pressure then, the wind pressure is causing tension on the inside, the eccentric loading is causing then tension on, on the outside so they sort of counteract each other to a certain extent. So it's, wind pressure could control if it's um, higher than the wind suction and depending on the magnitude of this eccentric load here. Of course for we determining shear wall loads and plane loads of the perpendicular shear walls we'd use the main wind force resisting loads. For actual out of plane design we would use components and cladding loads and there's actually sort of three things we need to consider here. One is the design of the parapet so there's a pretty clear requirements in ASCE 710 for that. The second is um, designing the wall to diaphragm connection. Our connection right here, the anchor bolts, etc. right here. The bearing plate, whatever it is we're using, the loading is pretty clear for that. The, uh, where it does not get as clear, is not as clear, is w when we're designing the wall here. So let's look at roughly the mid-height of the wall. The eccentric vertical load, the wind suction, will create tension on the outside face of the building. The parapet wind load will actually reduce the tension there, will actually be causing, just by itself, tension on the inside face is causing a moment in the opposite direction. So the question becomes what wind loading do we use for the parapet? Codes are not real clear. A very conservative thing would be set the parapet load to zero. That's probably unrealistic. A very aggressive design approach would be to use the full <clears throat> parapet component and cladding pressure, which is uh, sig typically significantly higher than the wall and would reduce the moment here quite a bit. A moderate sort of approach is just extend this wall pressure up up on the parapet. So the code is not real clear. I will use this last one but certainly will acknowledge that uh, it's a bit debatable is exactly what should be used. For seismic loading then also looking at the same thing if we look at the first mode, the vibrational first mode of the structure such as shown in in red here for the wall and of the parapet would be in the opposite direction of the wall where you'd have sort of this opposite uh, loading here. So again there becomes a question of exactly what loading to use. A uh, very conservative approach would be to have the parapet load in the opposite direction of the wall. That would give you the maximum moment here. Uh, aggressive as it were approach would be to have the loadings in the same direction which would reduce the moment here. A sort of moderate approach would be no parapet load and that's the approach I'm going to take here. If you did a full sort of uh, response spectrum analysis and look at all the modes it's probably actually a little bit somewhere between the uh, moderate um, and sort of the conservative vowel takes sort of the moderate approach here. Again, acknowledging um, alternate uh, uh, interpretations of the code. So one of the perhaps more difficult things is just coming up with the loading and wanted to discuss that at first. Finally, most of out-of-plane loading assumes that the mid-height load, mid-height moment is the maximum moment for large eccentric loads, the maximum moment can actually occur 
above mid height, significantly above mid height, or for pressure significantly below mid height. So there are relatively easy formulas to find the maximum moment uh, other than the mid height. However, as a practical matter, we have um, had a hard time as a code committee coming up with practical examples where the mid height moment is not reasonably a uh, good approximation of the maximum moment. So this is really more of a theoretical case, although it could come to play in some cases. All right, just a brief review of strength design for out-of-plane loading.